Welcome back to part two of the select phase. We covered a lot of ground in the first phase and went deep into the map and the gap. I'm sure by now you've identified a number of possibilities for the items that you've researched so far. If you have, then I'd like to congratulate you for taking consistent action on this material. It's by taking these actions that you'll become phenomenally successful with your business that I can promise you. So I'm sure you're wondering what you're gonna do with all the product opportunities that are sitting in front of you now. You're likely wondering what to do next and how to do it, right? Well, the good news is that this module is packed with critically important ideas and actions that will move you from not being exactly sure about which opportunity you're going to pursue to knowing without a doubt what your best and most profitable potential products are. Let's get started by defining the objectives of this phase. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do now that we've already determined our item's sensibility is determine our item's exact to the penny profitability. We'll do that by initially locating your supplier, vetting them, and knowing that we can move forward with confidence with our supplier. We're gonna figure out our profitability by discovering the cost price of our item with the supplier, as well as identifying the weight and product dimensions. That is how tall and how long our product is. This will allow us to calculate our exact profitability based on the sales price that we found in the previous module. We take all this information, input it into the Google Sheet, and can then figure out whether or not it's worth taking this item to the supplier negotiation phase. So as you can see, there's a lot to cover in this module. You'll likely watch this module more than once because the material is quite dense in here. Just take your time, take some notes, and watch the over-the-shoulder videos to see exactly how I do this. So before we can talk about calculating our item's profit, we must first of all know what makes up the profitability of the item. Now don't worry, we won't get too heavy on the mathematics here as the Google Sheet will do the heavy lifting for you. But we must understand what we're calculating so that we can proceed with ordering an item with complete certainty. So let's review the profit fundamentals. The first key indicator of profit is a figure that we calculate called the POI, or profit on investment of an item. We talked about this a little earlier in the program, but now we're gonna dive further into it and give you the lowdown on exactly how this works. I also mentioned earlier that with every product you ever sell, you're looking to achieve a POI of 100% or more. What this means is that you're taking your original investment figure and creating 100% return on that investment. In other words, you're gonna double your original investment. So let's say we invest $6 in an item. We want the POI to be 100%, meaning that when the item is sold and all expenses have been paid for, we wanna be left with $6 profit that we can put in our pocket. It's this doubling of our investment capital that allows us to increase our investments so quickly. The second way we'll express the profitability of an item is with our POR, or profit on return. This is the profit we make on every item we sell, expressed as a percentage of the sales price. We want this figure to be 30% or more. In simple terms, if our item sells for say $20, then our POR of 30% will give us a net profit of $6. This allows us to make a sales figure and quickly calculate the profit on that volume of sales. For instance, if we know our POR on every item is on average 30%, then we know we'll make a net profit of $9,000 on a revenue of $30,000. This helps us keep our item's profitability on track and make certain that we're always making the appropriate profit levels. If we're private labeling an item and importing, we wanna be doubling our money or more. Why? because we're taking financial risk to bring the item in and get it into stock. We want to be rewarded for that by at least doubling our money at all times. I don't suggest going any less than 10% below the POI or POR figures when starting out. So to work these profit percentages out, we'll need these specific values. We'll require the cost price of the item from the supplier. Your supplier may give you an FOB or EXW price from the supplier. Just to explain, FOB means free on board. This is the cost price of the item from the point of order and manufacturer right through to getting the item to the ship. EXW or XWorks is the cost of the item from the point of manufacture to the end of manufacture. In other words, if you get quoted an XWorks price, you'll have to arrange for the item to be collected from the factory and delivered to the ship yourself. You'll do this with the help of a freight forwarder, which we'll cover in more detail shortly. As mentioned, we must know the dimensions of the individual finished product. These are the dimensions of a sellable item. In other words, we wanna know the height and width of a product when it's in its individual product packaging 
to know how much space it's going to take up when we ship the item. We'll also want to know the weight of an individual fully packaged finished product. And finally, we'll require the sales price you intend to sell the item for. Once we have all of these variables, we can put them into the Google Sheet and calculate our profitability to the penny. The beautiful thing is that we can do this before we even order a sample. This puts you in a position of power and confidence as you know that at the sales price you're selling at, you're going to double your money every time you make a sale or more. So then why are these variables important? Well, the sales price is important because it will determine what the consumer pays Amazon for the item. This will then determine what we pay to Amazon as a referral fee or commission every time we make a sale. It's usually 15% of the price of the item. This will also determine what sales tax, if any, is applicable every time we make a sale. And don't worry, we'll be allowing for any sales tax when we use the software to calculate profitability. Now, the individual weight of a fully packaged item that's ready for sale determines what the importing costs are. This is certainly true when we're talking about air freight as the cost of importing by flying sometimes in from the supplier to the place you plan to sell the item is dependent on how heavy the items are. Weight will also determine what Amazon's FBA weight-based fee is going to be every time you make a sale. We'll break these fees down further for you shortly. And don't worry, the Google Sheet makes it simple as it calculates these for you. And finally, the item's weight determines how many pieces you can put in a carton. The reason for this is that you can only ship boxes that are under a certain weight into Amazon. This is a ruling from both Amazon and from couriers as well. Next, the dimensions of an individual fully packaged sellable item will determine the importing costs of products that are brought in by sea freight. In other words, when you place an order and those items are imported in a container and shipped to the place of destination. I mentioned that air freight costs are driven by weight Whereas now you can see that sea freight costs are determined by how much space the item takes up in a container. The item's dimensions will also determine what Amazon's FBA size tier is. There are a number of these that we will discuss shortly in more detail. And finally, the size of an item will determine how many pieces you can put in a carton. It's critical that every carton you send into Amazon has the exact same number of units in each one. We'll talk more about this in the next module, but just be aware of this for now. So then, how do we take all this information and, and actually calculate our POI and POR? Let's start with POI. So to calculate this without the spreadsheet, you would do this calculation shown here. You'll take the sales price of your item and subtract the sales tax if applicable. You'll then subtract the Amazon referral fee, which is of course Amazon's commission for selling the item in a particular category. You'll then subtract the Amazon FBA fee as well as the inward shipping cost from your supplier to your pre-Amazon location to the appropriate Amazon FBA fulfillment center. You'll then subtract the cost price of the item and divide all of this by the cost price and then multiply all of that by 100. Thankfully, the Google Sheet will do this for you in seconds. Now let's give you the POR calculation. You take the sales price of your item and subtract the sales tax if applicable. You'll then subtract the Amazon referral fee for that particular category. You'll then subtract the Amazon FBA fee as well as the inward shipping costs from your supplier to your pre-Amazon location to the appropriate Amazon FBA fulfillment center. You'll then subtract the cost price of the item and divide all of this by the sales price and multiply that by 100. Remember, you're calculating this per unit at all times and your key numbers are, for POI, 100%, and for POR, it's 30%. Keep that, and you'll be extremely profitable.